Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about all the books that I read in the later half of October. So I'm going to talk about all the books that I read in the later half of October today. Before we get into the video, I just want to mention I'm not wearing just a black t-shirt because this is just really cute. This is perfectly perfect. It's from a restaurant um, in my parents' little small town and I thought it was so cute. And so um, I had to wear it, but the text doesn't really show up on screen because of the way the the camera is and everything. So I'm not just wearing a black t-shirt. There'd be nothing wrong if, with that if I was. But I just wanna let you know. Also, I just wanna show it off because it's really cute. Anyway, I read 17 books in the later half of October, which is quite a lot for me. I'm very happy with what I read. The majority of what I read was amazing. I really liked these books. So the book that I read after my mid-month wrap-up was Blood Moon by Julian Graves. I actually got this as an ARC. I signed up to receive an ARC of this book and I am thoroughly impressed with Julian Graves' writing after reading this. This is, I believe, her second book. Her first book is Titan and I've had that on my Kindle Unlimited library like on and off um, just because it's very intimidating because it's so long. This one is only a hundred something pages. I was like sign me up. I really want to read your books but I'm having trouble reading books that are very long. So let's pick up this one. This one was freaking fantastic. This is a paranormal romance between a plus size bar owner witch and um the vampire who owns the club across the street from her is that they're at competing businesses with each other. So Hazel's the heroine, she's trying to blow off some steam one night at her friend's like paranormal creature party slash get together for around Halloween time. There she runs into a hot vampire named Vlad and they end up having a grand old time together if you get my drift. <laughs> but then she realizes that this guy is the owner of the club across the street from her bar that has been sabotaging her business, that has been spying on her, and is trying to take her customers. So she's not very happy, obviously. But there may be more to this Vlad may or may not know about the things going on, like that his bosses are doing. This was an amazing novella. I freaking loved it. The chemistry between these two characters off the freaking charts. So fun, so hot. I freaking loved them. I want another book about them, honestly. It's also perfect for the spooky, October fall season it gives a lot of those vibes even if the book did take place on Halloween like I'd still get those vibes and just the world building that Jillian Graves like created fantastic like I want to go to this paranormal setting of earth that she's created it looks so cool so yeah I definitely need to go back and read this author's debut but um, I'm very grateful that she sent me a copy an early copy of this book it is now out by the way I forgot to mention it is out now for y'all to read tropes in here uh grumpy sunshine where the heroine is the grump and the hero is more of the sunshine um it's a Halloween romance it's one night to more paranormal plus size rep it's magical it's a novella there is a tall heroine and there are vampires and witches I gave this book five out of five stars and I really 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 recommend it next is a recommendation from Rachel Reads and Sings she texted me and recommended Up All Night with a Good Duke by um, Amy Rose Bennett and man I love this one too this is a romance between Dominic and Artemis and they accidentally bump into each other I believe at a train station and ever since then they cannot stop thinking about the other person even though they have no clue who, who who they are. Artemis is in London to help her wallflower of a friend out during this season. Her friend is forced to go to balls in society because her dad wants her to get married and she has really bad social anxiety and so Artemis is there to kind of be her friend and walk her through this experience. Artemis's main goal in life is to open up a college for women because it does not exist and she thinks that women should get an education obviously. And she also writes under a pen name where she writes gothic romance novels. She has like a pen name, the whole gambit, and people love her books. And so Dominic in this situation has been incorrectly labeled by society as the dastardly duke. A lot of people in society think that he murdered his wife, which was not the case. And by some means, these two bump into each other again and they fake get engaged to meet their own needs and requirements from society. But then obviously when they fake, get fake engaged, uh, feelings start to develop between the two of them the more they spend time together. I thought this was a wonderful historical romance. The chemistry between Artemis and Dominic was A plus wonderful. I just wanted to keep reading more and more and more about them, honestly. I thought the side plots and side characters were very well paced and fleshed out as well. I also just adored the plot line of Artemis 
being a gothic romance author and her wanting to open up her own women's college. Like I adored that. Trigger warning in here for guns and blackmail. When it comes to tropes in here, one of the characters is an author, specifically the heroine. We have a book lover. The heroine loves books. There's a caretaking scene. The hero gets hurt at one point. Uh, the hero is a duke. There's a fake engagement. Hidden identity. The heroine has a hidden identity because of her pen name. Um, it's a historical. The heroine is very reluctant to love. There's a ruined heroine scene. Um, the hero is actually a single father and the heroine is considered a spinster and he is a widower. I gave this book four out of five stars. Thank you so much, Rachel, for recommending this amazing historical to me. I then read Isn't It Romantic by Lissa K. Adams, the fourth book in the Bromance Book Club series. I was just going to mention this here because I did read this in the later half of October, but you can check out my celiac representation reading vlog that is linked down below where I go in depth on my thoughts of this book. I then read a Cassie Mann novella called Winter Ward. I believe this novella takes place in Germany, by the way. Um, which is so cool because I don't think I had ever read it before this book a book that takes place in Germany. If you have any more romances, let me know that are written in English, by the way. <laughs> anyway, um, because I cannot I cannot read or speak German at all. Felix is the hero of this book and he is a very talented classical musician. But he has unfortunately lost his muse and he is very frustrated he can't write any music. One of Felix's oldest friends calls him up and asks for a favor. He asks if his um I believe 20-something year old daughter can come stay with him in the city during winter break. Bellamy is the heroine of the story, the daughter of his friend, and she really wants to go to Felix's house to hopefully get some lessons from him. She loves to play the violin and she wants to learn from the best. However, when she gets there, she's very disappointed when Felix is very grumpy, just wants to keep to himself the entire time in his music room. But in reality, Felix is finding it very hard to keep his hands off of Bellamy, so he does not want to be near her at all. Because he obviously does not want to be into and hitting on his oldest friend's daughter. Overall, this was a great little novella to escape into for a short time. This one is filled with music and instruments and just the discussion of music in general was great in here. I really liked that. And so if you're wanting a music related forbidden romance that's a novella i definitely would pick this one up for tropes it's age gap forbidden there are musicians and it is a novella i give this one four to five stars i then read ruined secrets by neva altaj this is the fourth book in her perfectly imperfect series isn't that funny perfectly imperfect this is no relation to <laughs> This series. I just thought that was funny. I actually received this as an ARC. I'm on Neva's um, ARC team and I am so grateful because I love this series so much. Um, this is the romance between Isabella and Luca. So Isabella has been in love with Luca basically since she was a child. I believe she fell into the deep end of her father, grandfather's pool, who's a mob boss. And Luca being one of the other mafia men under her grandfather um, ends up saving Isabella from the deep end saving her from drowning. Ever since that point, she has been in love with him. <laughs> it started off as little girl crush love and then developed into something more when she grew older. But there are things going on to where Isabel can think this could never ever happen. Um, there's a 16 year age gap between the two of them and he is already married. So she's just gonna live in unrequited love for the rest of her life. She has accepted that. He also acts like Issa, Isabella, does not exist at all. So she's like, this guy would never get with me ever. It's okay. But her dream finally comes true when her grandfather arranges for them to get married after Luca divorces his wife after he finds her cheating on him. And Luca is really struggling to ease his husband because of the age difference and he thinks that he's like having these feelings for a child. She's not a child. She's 20 something years old or no, she's 19. She's 19 years old. And so technically she's an adult, you know? So he feels very guilty that he's having these feelings toward Issa and Issa is not having that at all. She's like, if this man is going to want me, and I am going to have him and get him to want me by any means necessary. So she's gonna try anything to get this man to notice her, like anything. <laughs> um, but things take a turn when Luca gets in an accident and he cannot remember his life at all. He can't remember his wife. He can't remember his daughter because he had a daughter with his previous wife. So he has amnesia, he wakes up with amnesia and Issa ends up lying to him and telling them that they are very much in love and she feels very guilty for saying this but she just wants this man to love her so so badly and it kind of goes from there i'm not going to spoil anything for you and by the way the amnesia part is not a spoiler chapter one or the prologue of this book is about him waking up with amnesia and then it goes back in time to before he wakes up with amnesia 
So you know that from the get-go that he has amnesia. I honestly love the lengths that Issa took to make Luca hers. Like she just wants this man and he wants her too. Okay, he does. I just thought that their romance was stunning and I adored them so much. I can't wait for the next books in the series because her writing just keeps getting better and better and I love it. Triggering here for gore, violence, torture, and guns, tropes, age gap, amnesia, arranged marriage, brooding hero, there's a caretaking scene, uh, the heroine has obviously been longing for the hero. Um, it's a mafia romance. Uh, they are married for the majority of the books. So it's a married couple, single dad, tattooed hero, and touch her and die. Love that trope. So I really enjoyed this. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I then read Using Feho by Victoria Abilene. This is book number five in the Calcanian series, which is an alien romance series. So this one is about our heroine named um, Vanessa. Vanessa is a human woman who's been abducted from Earth. She's one of the many human women that is on this planet called Calcania, um, now on Calcania. And they have this tradition on the planet where there are no like single women you get married to a man. Like that's like pretty much in their culture. Like you are constantly marrying people. Um, and so she decides to marry Feho, who is a space pirate in hopes that she can escape him one day to, um, go find a spaceship to take her back to Earth because her sister is very sick and she wants to be with her. Feho, however, thinks that Vanessa picked him because she likes him and he is gonna be really hurt when he realizes that Vanessa tricked him. That's all I wanna say about this one because it was just so good. I really liked it. It's one of my favorites in this series for sure. I think book one and this one so far are my favorites. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And for tropes, you have it's an alien romance, Grumpy Sunshine, where the heroine is the grump, but the hero is the sunshine. It's about a married couple and there are piercings. Feho has them, so yeah. <laughs> a short little novella that I ended up reading, um, literally like what, seven pages long or something, 14, um, is called uh, The Fishing Contest about uh, Floor and a Wreck by uh, Ruby Dixon. This is like a little novella that takes place after Floor's fiasco. I believe I got this off of her newsletter if I'm not mistaken. This book is not on Goodreads yet, so I couldn't read it on Goodreads, but if I would, I'd give it like four stars or three. I don't know. It's not on Goodreads, so I haven't rated it yet, so I didn't need to, but I want to mention that I did read this very short novella. I then read The Doctor by Nikki Sloan. <laughs> um, this one is, who? it is definitely hot. Um, <laughs> um, so this is the forbidden romance between Greg and Cassidy. Cassidy is about to start her sophomore year of college when she ends up breaking up with her boyfriend for since high school, her high school boyfriend that she's been dating for a while because he is just crappy to her. So who is there to comfort her after they break up? Her ex-boyfriend's dad, Greg. <laughs> this is definitely a forbidden and hot read. That's all I'm going to say about it because it's fairly simple. It's a forbidden romance between a girl and her ex's dad. Audiobook was fantastic. It was so hot. <laughs> and I can't wait to read The Pool Boy because The Pool Boy takes place technically in the same series. I don't know how they relate or connect. Let me know if they do connect in any way. I'd love to know. Um, for tropes, you have age gap, boyfriend's dad, doctor, and it is forbidden. I gave this one four to five stars. I then read another alien romance. This is I Married a Naga by Regina Abel. I've been wanting to read more of these books. I had a goal. I would think of finishing this series, all the books that are currently out in the series by the end of the year. We'll see if that actually happens. These are just alien romances that are kind of like a male order bride arranged marriage situations between a human woman and a um, male alien of some kind. The first one was I Married a Lizard Man. Um, I don't think they correlate at all with like characters. The only character that I have seen in common is like the matchmaker dude who is in charge of human women being matched to aliens. So basically um, for this one, our heroine Serena has traveled to the planet Trangor to complete compete in a hunting competition. But things happen in this book to where she either has to marry an alien on this planet or die. So she obviously picks marrying an alien who just happens to be a Naga snakeish alien that you see on the cover. His name is Cesaro and his alien Naga species type is called Ordisian. And the two are in kind of a culture shock when they get married, obviously. She's a human. He's this snakeish creature. Um and so yeah this was uh this was really good. I really liked this. Um I love alien romances so like I just know that Regine Abel does it so well. I've read a few of her books and I'm probably gonna love like anything she writes. This world was so immersive. I really liked it. The heroine is really into rehabilitating um, animals and wildlife. And I love that aspect of the book. The couple was really sweet 
and um, I just loved their slow progression of falling in love. It's a very like slow burn friends to lovers romance. A memorable quote in here that I really enjoyed is, you are my soulmate. The goddess plucked you from the stars and sent you to me. You were made for me and this world. I love that. Uh, Tropes, it's an alien romance. It's on Kindle Unlimited. Um, it's a marriage of convenience. It's about a married couple. There are tales involved in certain things, okay? Um, there's a wedding and we have a worshiping, worshiping hero. Um, I give this book four out of five stars. The next three books are alien romances from a new series that I decided to pick up. I think I saw these books going around on my Instagram or TikTok or something of the sort. And I was like, you know what? Those look cute. And I decided to just marathon three of them in a row. <laughs> First one is our tech. So this is the Seven Brides for Seven Alien Brothers series, which is really fun. It's a play on Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, the musical. And so that's what each of these books is. You have seven alien brothers in arms who are on this planet. They end up buying this giant property and ranch. In the local village are a bunch of human women that some of them may or may not steal. This first one starts out not with Stolen Bride. The rest of the books are Stolen Brides. This one is about um, Artek and Nelly. So Artek has been going into town and he's really into like the local, I think blacksmith or shop owner, I think shop owner, shop owner's daughter named Nelly who runs the store. And he is spitting with her and decides that he's lonely and he wants a woman and he asks Nelly to marry him. It's very sweet, innocent romance. And she says yes, because she wants a different life than what she's living currently. So each book in the series is about one of these brothers getting married or finding a bride. For tropes for this one, you have alien romance, Kindle Unlimited, a married couple. You have the never been kissed trope. I don't think the hero has ever been kissed before. Um, there's no third act breakup. Yes. Um, it's a sweet romance and there is a wedding in here. I give this one four to five stars. So then book two is about Benjar and he is the catalyst, the starter for these aliens kidnapping human women. He ends up kidnapping Ruby in hopes that she will be his bride and the rest goes from there. They're in a cabin together stuck in a snowstorm. This one was a little bit too insta-lovey for me and I didn't love this one as much as book one. I gave this one three stars. And then I also read Callum. Um, and Callum is kind of like the oldest of the brothers, oldest of the bunch. And he's deemed himself kind of like the father of them all, kind of. And he has been kind of like really into and obsessed with Pearl, who is Ruby from book two's older sister. And uh, basically Pearl goes after, like goes and tries to walk to the um, ranch to try and find her sister because she's missing. And she ends up getting stuck in a snowstorm and Callum ends up rescuing her and they spend some time in a barn together and feelings get revealed. This one is really sweet. There's also a little bit of a darker element or more serious element in this one specifically because both of them have experienced some trauma with past relationships. Um, she has been sexually abused by her previous husband. She's a widow and he has experienced some trauma with his past love, supposed love as well. Um, and I love how they talk to each other and are very vulnerable with each other and kind of like healed a little bit from that whole experience. Um, for tropes in this one, it's an alien romance. There's forced, forced proximity because they're stuck in this barn together. It's on Kindle Unlimited. There's plus size wrap. Uh, they're stuck in a snowstorm. And the who did this to you trope where the hero says, who did this to you? Um, and the heroine is a widow. I give this one four to five stars. I plan to read the other books in the series in November. And uh, I know that not all of them are out yet though. So I know that book four is out. So I definitely want to read this, but there's just really fun, sweet, in the romance novellas that I really like. I then decided to pick up Like You Love Me by Adriana Locke. This is an author that I'm going to be seeing at Book Bonanza next year. So I've been slowly like doing my research about authors that are going to the signing that I'm going to. And so I decided to just pick this one up and this one was really cute and sweet. This is a small time romance about childhood friends, Holden and Sophie getting into a marriage of convenience. Both of them have reasons for getting like fake married to each other, um, but they did not really anticipate real feelings to spark between the two of them. And so yeah, things get complicated obviously when they start falling in love. And it's even more complicated because they have their own like plans going on in their lives. Like he really wants to move to Florida to become like this, a very prevalent vet in this company he's always wanted to work with and she really wants to stay in this small town and run the bed and breakfast that she's always dreamed of running and so their dreams don't really align and so it's really difficult for them once they start fighting for each other they're like how is this going to work out in real life if 
we have different dreams and plans. So they have to deal with those issues. This small town was really cute and really sweet. I loved it. I can't wait for the next book. I don't know when that's gonna come out or if it is gonna come out, but I really wanna read more about this small town. I also just love friends to lovers. So this was a cute little trait for me. Um, for tropes, childhood friends, friends to lovers, marriage of convenience, and it is a small town romance. I give this book four out of five stars. I then decided to pick up The Dame and the Devil by Dahlia Davies based on the cover and seeing it around on Instagram. And unfortunately, I did not love this one as much as I thought I would. This one is a romance between a human who kind of like tricks the devil into keeping her and loving her and it gets very spicy. You know, it's very short. It's only like 60, 40 pages long. Um, unfortunately, this one just really let me down. I don't think like there was enough world building or explanation with things. Um, like I'm a huge lover of monster romances and I was super excited for this one because I love like devilish romances. Um, but there were so many things I was confused by. There's this whole scene where she is dancing with a bunch of other people on Halloween in the underworld. I'm like, where did that originate? Why did that start? What is going on? Um, why do humans get picked to go down there? Like, I don't understand. And then she really wants to get with the devil so that he can punish the people who have wronged her. And so like, there's like this whole scene about her getting one of those guys down from earth and torturing him and killing him. Like, well, but what was the reason? What did this dude do to hurt you? So like to, to kill him, what did he do? I don't understand. There was no explanation whatsoever. Um, I really love the dark vibes and like the devilish creature in there though, like he looks really cool on the cover. Um, but this unfortunately let me down. I gave this book 2.5 out of five stars, more leaning towards a two. I then picked up Fractured Sky by Katherine Cowles. Oh my goodness, I loved this one. This is the fifth book in the Tattered and Torn series, the romance between Ramsey and Shiloh. It's fantastic. This is a small town romance series if you don't know about these books. I actually have a video going up, I believe later this week, about uh, this series. I'm going to talk about and review every book in this series for you. And so uh, you can expect that video when it comes out. Um, it's gonna come out very soon. So I'm gonna leave it at that, but I just wanna mention that I love this book and you'll know more of my thoughts when that video ends up coming up. I read Kingdom Fall by A. Zavarelli. This is my first A. Zavarelli book. I heard about this book from Maraid um, over at Maraid Lane. I'll link her channel down below. I really like her recommendations. If you love kind of limited reads, darkish mafia romances, check, check her out, please. I heard about this one from her and was really interested because it ticked so many of my boxes. Okay, it's a mafia romance. Single dad, nanny, disability rep. The heroine had a vocal cord injury. She's not able to speak anymore. There's also a hidden identity aspect in this one as well. She was just talking about this book uh, Marie was and I was like I need to read it now so I finally get around to it and I really 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 enjoyed it Alessio in here is the mob boss the mafia man they don't call it mafia he's like it's not the mafia it is it's 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 the mafia or mafia adjacent okay <laughs> but he is in need of a nanny for a six-year-old son and there enters Natalia he ends up interviewing her and hiring her to be his son's nanny she's experienced some traumatic things in her life and um, she knows nothing about the world that Alessio is in. And she is a little bit scared, but very determined to complete the job that she is has set out to do by becoming his nanny. There are things going on, there are secrets that she's keeping that you as the reader don't know what they are until very much into the book. Um, so it's a little bit frustrating, but also amazing on the author's part because I kept wanting to read, like, what is this girl hiding? What are her secrets? What does she want? And I really like that, how you weren't privy to her thoughts in that department. So things get a little complicated when Alessio starts developing feelings for his son's nanny. This is a really solid mafia romance. Please be aware, this gets super duper dark, gory, bloody torture scenes that are very descriptive, okay? Um, so if you're not into that, I probably wouldn't pick this up. I really like how these characters grew together as people and individually, like they learned from each other to grow as people individually. I also just love the relationship they had with Alessio's son, Nino. I love Nino in here. I do feel like the uh, book was rushed a little bit at certain points and I just wanted more development with certain characters in certain areas. So this was not a full five star for me. Um, for trigger warning, blood, gore, torture, beating, kidnapping, and graphic depictions of violence and torture. Okay, um, tropes, a brooding hero, there's a caretaking scene, it's a dark romance, there is the hidden identity trope, it's on Kindle Unlimited, it has the mafia trope, um, it's a nanny romance, there's disability rep, a scar character, the heroine has scars from past trauma, um, a single dad, 
touch her and die and the who did this to you trope i give this book four to five stars and the last book that i ended up reading in october is when she's pregnant by ruby dixon this is her latest release and the eighth book in the Brizdiverse uh, novella series. You can read these books as standalones, by the way. You don't need to read them in order. They're just really fun. Oh, so much fun. So this is just a really sweet short novella about a human woman named Naomi living on this planet called Rizda 3. You read about it in the other Rizda books. And she has gotten this fertility drug, used all of her life savings on this fertility drug to get pregnant. However, the guy whose swimmers she was gonna take bows out and she's like man i gotta find someone and so she goes to kind of like the human police on this planet she goes into their office one day sees the guy working at the counter named anir and she's immediately like i need help can can you help me with this situation i need this to happen now um because i have like two days to get this done or else all my money gets thrown out the window and i can get pregnant and my main dream in life is to be a mother and so he ends up helping her out with her little situation and things develop. They start actually liking each other. I give this one three stars. It was okay. It's not my favorite Ruby book by any means. Um, but I of course love her world building and her characters. There are just things in here I didn't care for. There's a giant miscommunication trope, which is not my favorite. So yeah, I just give this one three out of five stars. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all the books that I read in the later half of October. Man, my voice is sore. That was a lot of talking. Um, please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those, things you can leave me a giraffe emoji in the comment section down below <laughs> but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all wake up today's gonna be a good day 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 wake up today's gonna be a good day.